Would you stand with me as we pray together this morning? Father God, as we join our hearts together in the unity and the bond of Christian love, Father, thank you for this song that Katie has sung so beautifully and for the words that uh, it speaks to our hearts. Father, if there ever was a time in all of life that we need a breakthrough, we need a breakthrough of the Holy Spirit in the church of the living God. Father, we need a breakthrough in every Christian's heart and life, a renewal, a revival, a refreshing. Oh God, how we pray, Holy Spirit of the living God, fall fresh and anew on each one of us here this morning. And Father, as we once again look at this fourth sermon on our series of the Holy Spirit, I pray, oh God, that you would awaken within the heartstrings of each one of us the importance of being filled with the Spirit of the living God. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. This morning is the fourth sermon in our sermon series on being filled with the Spirit and living the Spirit filled life. <clears throat> now, we interrupted our series because the month of May is filled with all kinds of activities. We did a Mother's Day sermon and recognized the mothers. We did a baccalaureate day and recognized the graduating seniors. And then last Sunday morning, we uh, did a sermon on blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord in commemoration of Memorial Day. And we recognized our veterans. And so this morning, I want to get back to our series on the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, we looked first, if you will remember, the first sermon was the Holy Spirit, your best friend, uh, the comforter. Secondly, we looked at the Holy Spirit, the breath of God, when God's work, uh, the Holy Spirit was there in the work of creation, the Holy Spirit was there in the work of inspiration of the Word of God, and the Holy Spirit was there in the work of the incarnation of God coming to this earth and becoming flesh through Jesus Christ and dwelling among us. And then thirdly, we looked at the Holy Spirit, the wind of God, uh, the wind that uh, came on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection and the wind that filled that room and lives were changed forever. And this morning, I want us to look at this fourth sermon entitled, The Holy Spirit, the Water of God. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit under the symbolism of water. Throughout the Bible and throughout scriptures, water is used as a symbol of the refreshing. It's used as a symbol of the revival and the renewal that comes when God pours out his spirit on his people. Uh, and we're going to see how important this is in our lives. Katie saying a few moments ago, we all need a breakthrough. And that breakthrough is this of uh, the Holy Spirit leading and guiding and being engaged in our heart and lives. Read with me this morning our text found in the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, on the last day, that great day of the feast. Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. And he who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet come because Jesus was not yet glorified. That's speaking about before Jesus made his ascension back to heaven, and then it would be 10 days later that the Holy Spirit would come to indwell the believer. Now, in that verse, it said the great feast that it speaks about there, here was a Jewish celebration. The Jews, the Hebrew people, the Israelites, they celebrated a feast called the Feast of Tabernacles. It was one of the most 
joyous celebrations in all of their lives, in their ritualism. They celebrated this period of time. It commemorated the time when they had uh, disobeyed God and they had to wander in the wilderness for those 40 years. And how in the midst of that desert time, God provided for them water from the rock and how God opened up the fountains and poured uh, out upon them that life-giving, refreshing water that would sustain them through those years of wilderness wanderings. And so each year, they celebrated, the Jews celebrated this time of ceremony in the city of Jerusalem. At the Feast of Tabernacles, they would make a procession and they would go down to the pool of Siloam and there the priests would preside as they would fill their vessels at that pool of water once every day they did that for seven days they would bring their vessel back full of water and they would pour it out upon the altar as a means of thanksgiving and recognition of what God had done for them as they wandered in the wilderness so it came the last day the seventh day of this feast this had become a ritual to the Jewish people and they had really missed the meaning of what it was all about you see they did this year after year and uh, they would pour out uh, they would pour out this water upon the altar, and uh, it was uh, showing uh, God's Spirit upon them. It was about revival. It was about a refreshing. It was about, about a breakthrough. Once again, as Katie sang about a few moments ago, it's as though Jesus, who was the fulfillment of that prophecy of the living water, could no longer contain himself, and he observed over and over, he watched the, the empty ritualism of those Hebrew people. You see, it just became a ritual to them. They had lost the meaning of what that was all about. They were going through the motions. They were going through the ritualism of it, and Jesus was watching. Let me tell you, did you know this morning God is watching? God is watching from a distance God is watching this world. God is watching over this world. This world looks out of control this morning, and to you and me, it is out of control. But let me tell you, it's like the song says, he's got the whole wide world in his hands. Let me tell you, Jesus knows where this world is going. Jesus already knows how this world is going to end up. And let me tell you, even though the world has gone crazy, let me tell you, he's in control, and he's watching from a distance. You see, no longer could Jesus withhold what he knew and felt. He stood up and cried with a loud voice here in our text, He that is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. He that is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink, and out of his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. What a powerful scripture for you and me to understand that the spirit of the living God who was poured out that day on the day of Pentecost, 50 days after resurrection, that same spirit is poured out upon us uh, because Bethlehem was God with us. Calvary was God for us, and Pentecost was God in us. Not only does the Holy Spirit want to be this burning fire within our bones, not only does the Holy Spirit want to be this fresh wind and this breath that blows in our lives, but the Holy Spirit also wants to be that refreshing river of life that gives us joy, that gives peace, that gives fulfillment, that gives us power in our life. And so this morning, let me give you four quick things about the Spirit-filled life and being filled with the Holy Spirit. First of all, we see the subject of the filling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if any man thirst, there's the subject. The subject is you. The subject is if any man, speaking about 
men and women and boys and girls. If any man, that's the subject. Some people think that the filling of the Holy Spirit is just for a select few of people, for a special group of saints. Some think it's just for preachers or deacons or Sunday school teachers. Many people don't realize that the Holy Spirit is for ordinary believers. But Jesus says, if any man thirst, you see the filling of the Holy Spirit is for every child of God. The wonderful adventure of the Spirit-filled life is for every one of God's children. We're all commanded in the book of uh, Ephesians chapter 5, 18. It says, be filled with the Spirit. I'm thankful this morning that it wasn't for some special group of people. I'm grateful this morning it was for anyone who thirsts. For Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink, that you, you and I, we're the subject of this passage of Scripture. Uh, we're the one who's invited. We're the one that Jesus bids to come the, to this fountain that never will run dry. You see, you are the one that Jesus died for, the one that he rose again in order that he might fill you and me with his Holy Spirit. Many times we act as, as though God is this reluctant tyrant uh, and that we're the hero, heroes and that somehow if we just plead and we beg with God, or if some way we can convince God to send revival or to send his blessing, if, if somehow we could just persuade God, then we would be filled with the Spirit. But you see, it's not a matter of persuading God. It's a matter of permitting God, allowing God. He invites every one of us today to this wonderful adventure of the Spirit-filled life, a life that is not monotonous, a life that is momentous, a life that's not dull, but a life that is filled with dynamism, a, a life that's dynamic. And Jesus stood and he said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me, notice, and drink. But not only do we see the subject of the Spirit-filled life, any man, any person, Jesus gives the invitation. He extends it. He offers it freely if any man who's thirsty. And so that's the subject, anyone. Secondly, this morning, we see the source the source of the Spirit-filled life. Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me. Young people, the source of the Spirit-filled life is none other than Jesus himself. We've read in the book of John chapter 20 where Jesus said to those disciples, receive ye the Holy Spirit, and he breathed upon them. We have the same idea here, and it's that this source of the filling of the Holy Spirit is Jesus. He's the source. Jesus had told them to tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. They were to wait for this wonderful promise from the Father, he said, I will send you another comforter and he will be in you and indwell you and be with you forever. Let me tell you, Jesus is the giver of the Holy Spirit. Jesus once said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Let me tell you, thank God today that Jesus Christ is the source. The church is not the source. Sometimes we think if we could just be good enough, if we would just pray enough, if we would just study the Bible enough, if we could just work for God enough, then we could be filled with the Holy Spirit. But you see, we have it backwards, church. Let me tell you, holiness is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to holiness. Service is not the way to Christ. Christ is the way to service. And it begins when you and I come to him and we realize he's our source. He is the life giver. He's the one to whom we come. And Jesus stood there on that last day of the feast and he said, if any man thirst, 
let him come unto me. Jesus, on that day of celebration, he watched those Jewish people as they went through their ritualism that had lost its meaning among them. He watched people whose lives were empty, whose lives were barren and fruitless and broken, people who didn't know God. And he cried out almost in frustration, saying, you're going to all the wrong places for power. You're going to the temple. You're going through the rituals. You're trying to do all of the things in life on your own strength. But he says, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Jesus is the source. Let me tell you, when you and I come to the point that we've tried all that we know to do, we come to the place where we come to the end of ourselves, and then we find that the true beginning of life is in Jesus and Jesus Christ alone. Look at Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires... To come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let me tell you, when you come to Jesus, it means that you come to the end of your self-effort. You've come to the end of what you can do and you've come to rely upon Jesus and to trust in him and to look to him completely and entirely. Let me tell you, you've looked to him and you've looked away from everything else. You come utterly and completely and say, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender, I surrender all. Young people, Jesus is the source of the spirit-filled life. But there's a third thing this morning that I want you and I to take away, and that is not only the subject is any man, it's for any man, Uh, Not only the source, Jesus is the source, but what is the secret of the Spirit-filled life? Jesus said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Let me tell you, the Spirit-filled life has to be appropriated by faith. Let me ask you a question. Jesus said, if any man is thirsty... Let me ask you a question, church, this morning. Are you thirsty? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 in verse 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Here's the question this morning. What do I have to do in order to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I mean, Ephesians says, be filled with the Spirit. Let me tell you, you have to be thirsty. Let me tell you, if you're thirsty for, uh, for less of self and for more of God, if you're thirsty for less of sin and more of holiness, if you're thirsty for less of self-effort and more of what God can do, if you're thirsty for less of the natural and more of the supernatural, if you're thirsty to live for God and to point others to God, Let me tell you, if you're thirsty for the holiness of God, if you're thirsty for the righteousness of God, if you're thirsty for the person of God, that's the secret to being filled with the Holy Spirit. If we are filled upon other things in life, if we're drinking at the waters out there of this world that uh, is filled with pollution and sin and self, and idolatry, if we're, if we're looking for all those other kinds of things in life, let me tell you, you'll live a barren life. You'll live a life that is filled with drought. You'll live a life that is absolutely barren in all that you want it to be. Let me tell you, the secret this morning is, are you thirsty for the Lord Jesus? Blessed, Jesus said. That word blessed could be uh, Translate it happy. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. That is the secret we appropriate by faith, the filling of the Holy Spirit in our life. Let me ask all of us a question this morning. I've already asked myself this question many times this week. Are you thirsty? 
Are you thirsty today? Do you want to have a better life? Do you want to live a better life? Do you want to enjoy a better life? Jesus said, let him come unto me and let him drink. You see, it's a matter of simple faith being filled with the Spirit. It's not necessarily an emotional experience. It's not necessarily, uh, necessarily an intellectual experience. It's an experience by faith appropriating what God has for us and then taking control of our life and being that living water in us and through us. That's the secret. You see, I don't know how much of the Holy Spirit you have in your life today. I don't know how much of the Holy Spirit that you are thirsty for in your life today, but I do know this. I do know that you have all of the Holy Spirit that you want unless you're thirsty to want more. You see, there's a song that says, and Ken has sung this before, and I used to sing this myself, more of you, more of you. I've had all but what I need, just more of you. Of things I've had my fill, but yet I hunger still, empty and bare. Lord, hear my prayer for more of you. Lastly, this morning, I want us to look at the Spirit-filled life. What is the supply of the Spirit-filled life? Jesus said, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And notice the phrase, and out of his innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Young people, that is the supply. Your body, my body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit which you have of God. You're not your own. We're bought with a price. There's a picture over there in the Old Testament uh, that uh, Ezekiel uses. It's a picture of this water that flows from our innermost being. Ezekiel gave that picture in the book of Ezekiel of a river that started in the sanctuary of God and it started in the Holy of Holies in the temple and he watched that river as it flowed by the altar and it flowed out of the temple and it flowed out into the land. It became a river so deep that you could swim in it and wherever that river flowed, there was life. Wherever that river flowed, there was vegetation. There was the greening of the grass and the trees and blessing. Let me tell you, water is not a luxury. It's an absolute necessity. You and I cannot live physically without water. You can look around at the crops and the grass and the trees and the ponds and the rivers and the oceans, and we can see when there is a lack of water. We can see what it does to the land and how barren it becomes and, and the droughts that happen. But that's also a spiritual picture of what the landscape is like when the church is not filled with the Holy Spirit, all of us. Let me tell you, there are unsaved people everywhere we go. How do I know that? Because Jesus said, if you want to go to heaven, he said, straight is the gate, narrow is the way, and few there be who go in thereat. But Jesus said, the way to destruction, the road is broad. And Jesus said, there are many that go that way. Let me tell you, our supply of water may be limited, but God's supply is forever. And Jesus said the supply comes from within you and me. It comes from our innermost being. It comes when we are willing to be a channel. God didn't intend for us to be filled with the Spirit so we could contain the water. He didn't intend for you and me to be a reservoir. You see, some people see the Spirit of God are being filled as a reservoir just to keep inside. But let me tell you, God did. God wants us to be a powerhouse for him. God doesn't want us to be reservoirs of just keeping everything within us that is a blessing or can be a blessing out there to humanity. I love what the hymn writer said when he spoke of, make me a channel of blessing, Lord, I pray. Make me a channel of blessing. Let me tell you, do you want to be filled with the Spirit and to live a better life and to live a more productive life and to live a more happy life? 
Let me tell you, if you want this water of life living in you and flowing out of you, out into the world so that others can see the Christ live within each of us, the Bible says, be filled with the Spirit. This morning, there will be an inexhaustible supply that God will provide if you and I are thirsty enough to want more of him. Would you stand as we pray together this morning? Father God, as we pause today, thank you, Lord, for your word. God, thank you for the reminder. Thank you, Lord, that we know you're watching from a distance. Thank you, Lord, that we know that we're not what we ought to be. We're not what we should be most of the time in our life. And God, you know when people are going through the motions. You know when people are just going through ritualism and, and it's lost. It's lost the meaning. Oh God, as I look around at humanity and I see the barrenness of life. And oh God, people are searching and man is ever searching. He's looking out yonder to find his dreams for life. When God, he just needs to look to you to look into your word you said if any man is thirsty let him come to me and drink and out of his innermost being will be rivers of water God I pray that you will help each one of us to be filled with the Holy Spirit yes Lord we know that the day we give our heart and life to you that the Holy Spirit comes to indwell us but we realize that in our human nature we don't allow the Holy Spirit to fill us up to be what we need to be we realize our human flesh gets in the way we realize that self gets in the way we realize that ego gets in the way and Father when, it, when th those things happen we're not filled with the Spirit to be used of God in a powerful way. Father, forgive us. Oh, God, forgive us. As Katie sang so beautifully, Lord, we need a breakthrough. Lord, your church needs a breakthrough. Churches all over America need a breakthrough. Oh, God, how I pray in the name of Jesus that every person who professes the name of Jesus would be filled every day with the Spirit of Almighty God to be used of God and to be a vessel through which the living waters of Christ flow out of our lives into the streets, into the highways and the hedges. Oh God, to turn people's hearts towards you. Father, if there's someone here this morning that needs to come and give their heart and life to Christ, speak to their heart, I pray. If there's someone here that needs a church home, Father, speak to their heart. To let this be their church home. Father, if they're just people that want to come down and pray for whatever the need, speak to their heart, I pray. Holy Spirit, this is your invitation in Christ's name.